So today here we have uh, a problem about limits where it says limit and and it's tending towards infinity. So before starting this uh, problem, I would like to say something about rhyme and sum as we will need it later on while solving the problem. So let's start with uh, the definition of uh, rhyme and sum. So for the rhyme and sum here, we have one theorem that relates the rhyme and sum with uh, definite integral. The theorem is as follows. If a function fx is integrable on a closed interval ab, then we can say that this definite integral is going to be equal to this limit, this expression. The whole expression here over here is to what we call as Riemann sum. Here we have different variables, delta x, which is the width of the rectangle. I will come to this later on. And xi is going to be a plus i delta x. So talking about what Riemann sum uh, has a has to do with a definite integral, we will have to come over here and talk about the, the graph. So suppose we have one function fx and we want to find the area under the curve fx, right? So what we will do is we will divide the function fx into several uh, rectangles and uh, each rectangle has equal width, which is going to be delta x and it is common sense to think that delta x is going to be equal to b minus a by n, where n represents the number of the rectangles itself. So the conclusion that we can draw from uh, here is that every time we see an expression, something like this, which is the Riemann sum, we can convert it to a definite integral if f is integrable on the closed interval a, b. So let's get back to the problem and find the solution of the problem. So let's start on. So what we can do at first is that we can multiply the numerator and denominator with n. And as we know that n is saying n is same as saying it is the square root of n square. So it is going to be something like this. And doing the same for others. And now since all of them have the same exponent, we can put them under the same square root. And now we can cancel the terms. So all that I'm doing until now is are all the basic algebras. Now I'll divide the numerator and denominator by n. which can be simplified further. So here we can see here the summation, the sum of these all terms, this forms a series. As we can see from here, the numerator is the same, it's always one, but one thing is changing in the denominator, it's this part here. The first term has one by n, second term has two by n, and the nth term has one, which means saying one is the same as saying it's n by n. So, so the denominator is changing, and uh, the most important thing here is the n remains the same. It's n everywhere, but the upper part, the one, the numerator of this part is changing. So it's going from one to n. So we can say this is a series and we can write 
this part, this expression as a form of summation. So let's do that. So we can say it goes from i equals to 1 to n and inside you can write something like something like this. We can do a little bit of uh, simplification here. Since the variable inside the summation is i, 1 by n will act as a constant, so we can pull it inside the summation. So at this point, we need to recognize the limit as being of the form of the Riemann series. And now what we know from the theorem of the Riemann series is that uh, the definite integral is going to be the expression is equal to, equal to the expression of the Riemann series. So now all we need to do is uh, we need to compare this general form of the Riemann series with the expression that we got over here. So by comparing, we can see that this is going to be our delta x and this is going to be our function fxi. So I will write delta x as 1 by n and fxi as 1 by tender 1 plus i by n. So now what we need to find from here is we need to find the upper the upper and the lower limits and the function itself. Now, the most natural choice for xi in this case is going to be 1 plus i by n. So let's go with that, uh, which means the function that we are going to integrate is uh, going to be fx is equal to 1 by root under x. So now we have the function and now we have the xi and what did we learn from here we learned that xi is always going to be equal to a plus i delta x so comparing this with our general form of the general form in the formula we can see that a is going to be equal to 1 and delta x is going to be equal to 1 by n by the way, we already have the value for the delta x, which is 1 by n, and it must be equal. So we have the a, we have the, we have the function, and now we need is uh, the upper limit b. So how can we get the upper limit b? We know that delta x is, was defined before as b by, a by, uh, b by b minus a by n, and delta x is 1 by n is equal to b minus a by n. So from here, we can see that b is going to be 2. So now these are the things that we have found until now. We have the a, we have the b, and we have the function itself. So using the theorem, what we can conclude here is This expression is going to be equal to the definite integral 1 to 2 1 by 2 under x dx so now we can see that this definite integral is far more easier to solve than this Riemann sum so what we will do is we will solve the definite integral and as we can see the function fx the integrand is continuous on the limits 1 and 2. If it is continuous on the upper, like over the interval 1 and 2, then we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So using the fundamental theorem of calculus, what we can say is x minus 1 by 2 plus 1 divided by minus 1 by 2 plus 1 and solving this we get the 
solution.